hello again. Um, so today we're gonna talk about something that is super, super dear to me, uh, security in the open, and how the connection between what we do here in the open source community um, and what companies are doing is really strong and valuable, and how we can, as contributors, leverage it to have more opportunities to contribute to open source, and as companies, understand the very clear and evidence-based benefits of that kind of work. Um, so as I said, my name is Kaylin, I work at Okta, um, and I'm also very active in the Cloud Native community. And I'm Jonathan Whitaker. I'm a staff software engineer at Okta. I work on the Okta fine grain authorization project. And I'm also a core maintainer on the OpenFGA project where I spend a lot of my work day working on open source software as well. And so I'm going to start off with a little bit of talk about the community aspect as someone who's been really involved in the open source community for the last few years and who's had a tremendous amount of personal impact as a direct result of that work. And then I'm going to pass it off to the expert to talk about some specific successes that Okta has had um, due to this connection. And so first off, um, this is nothing new. The community needs you. The community needs more faces. Uh, I've been involved for about two years now, and um, it's really a little bit shocking how consistent the group of people I see contributing is. Um, the open source community is built on the backs of really passionate people who care deeply about the industry and they want to make it better. And it's full of exactly the kind of people who are going to give every ounce of themselves to a cause and they will work tirelessly to make sure that the community thrives. I mean, this is really, really true. I was just back here where tag security was literally shipping PRs as we prepared for this keynote because they're always on. Um, and these are exactly the kind of people that are going to burn out. They're not just giving all of their efforts to the open source community. They also have careers that are really demanding uh, where they also give so much of their time. And it's really important that we can get new people into the community, not only so that there's more opportunities for new folks to grow and become involved, but also so that we can share some of that knowledge and take a little bit of the load off of the people that have for years and years now carried this community. Um, so I also think it's really important to say that I don't think that it's the responsibility of individual contributors to do this all in their free time. The industry cannot survive off of free labor from passionate people, and it's important that the companies who use this software uh, do what they can to provide valuable time to the community. And so um, I absolutely love this graphic, and I'm sure every single person in this room loves XKCD. Yeah, woo, clap, <laughs> they deserve it. Um, and I think that like, you'd be hard pressed right now to find a software product out there that doesn't have a trace of open source uh, somewhere in their dependency chain. And more often than not, we're seeing open source products built into the foundation of commercial software of giant companies that are making loads of money. Their primary tools will be open source tools. Um, despite this, the number of companies that encourage and allow their employees to contribute to open source is staggeringly low. And this isn't me making it up because I care a lot about the community. This this is evidence-based research um, that you can read if you read the uh, Global Spotlight from 2023. There's a whole bunch of evidence that this is the case. So I think that um, it's important for companies to know that there is evidence that giving to open source has very clear benefits. It causes your employees to grow their network, to be at the forefront of technology. Like we all know that like most of the tools that we're using that are like leading security in the industry have come from the open source community. And when you work in open source, you're not working with someone who kind of cares about security. You're often working with the people who wrote the papers for the standards that are being enforced. Um, so Personally, I have benefited tremendously from my involvement from, in open source. Not only have I become more technically competent, have I increased my knowledge, but I've gained a community that I reach out to all of the time to help me with my day-to-day -day work, and my company benefits from that hugely. Uh, now I'm going to pass it over to Jonathan to talk about Okta's specific successes and how we worked together with the CNCF to make not only our open source products stronger, but to make our internal products stronger. Thank you. Yeah, so whether you're working on an open source software project or whether you're working on some closed source software within your private organization, um, we all have something to benefit from when it comes to secure software practices, sharing our learnings, our best practices, communicating that out across the software industry, and all growing and learning together, elevating our overall security posture. 
Now within the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, there are various communities that are out there to help you as developers. And these are just to name a few. We have the Tag Security Team, the Tag Observability Team, Tag Network, and there are others as well to help with community and other Cloud Native related communities. Now, if you're an organization and you're looking to get started at you know, improving your security posture, I would encourage you all to start with these CNCF communities. There are tons of passionate individuals within the CNCF that want to help in these different domains, and they are more than willing to, to engage with you, give you best practice recommendations, assess your current state of things, and just overall increase your, and elevate your software practices. Um, in addition to that, there are tons of tools and standards emerging out of the CNCF landscape. I'm sure all of you are very much aware of a lot of them that are emerging. Um, so if you're thinking about integrating new tooling or practices or processes into your organization, don't start from scratch. Don't reinvent the wheel. Look at what other groups within the CNCF are doing. There's all sorts of incredible tools like vulnerability scanners, security scanners, and various things for software supply chain management which is a hot topic right now with all the government, governance and government uh, requirements that are emerging. So also help your community help you, right? If you are working on open source software, maybe you're working in closed source software, right? Maybe you can manage your project in a way where you can label things with good first issue or help wanted. And this can allow you to extend your reach to a broader community and get more help on security related contributions. So maybe think about ways that you can reorganize your project, get some external help on some of these you know, security tasks that you might not have time for in your, in your standard timeline. Get that help from that community. And there are so many other resources that I could stand up here and talk about that the Cloud Native Computing Foundation offers for developers. And so you know, reach out on CNCF's website, look at the blogs. There's a lot of other related content as well. It's a very rich ecosystem, as I'm sure you all are very well aware. So as a developer working at Okta and on the OpenFGA project, I just wanted to share my personal experience with an Okta success story on the OpenFGA project. So OpenFGA, FGA stands for fine grain authorization. The OpenFGA project is a permission engine built to solve fine grain authorization at any scale. It was created and it is currently actively maintained by Okta and Auth0. It's a CNCF sandbox project and it's actually currently in incubation within the CNCF as well. Our mission or goal really was to provide and is to provide developers and organizations more standard ways to enforce fine grain authorization across your whole stack. Not just in your applications, but in your infrastructure and everything in between. So if we look at the top OWASP security risks, number one is actually broken access control. Number four is insecure design. So within the top 10 of security risks identified in the security industry today, access control is a problem. Authorization is a problem. It's hard to get access control right, especially with more complex and rich access control policies emerging in this diverse landscape. We wanted to build OpenFGA to help you guys, the developers, Think about authorization early on in your design and development process. Authorization shouldn't be an afterthought. It should be an integral part early on in your design and development phase as you're building out your infrastructure and your applications. And this software is freely licensed under Apache 2.0. So whether you're, you, whether you're an open source project or whether you know, you're some, some commercial offering, you're welcome to use it freely. We just ask that you give us attribution. So more generally, Okta decided to join the CNCF to shape the future of cloud computing with everyone else in this CNCF landscape. And more specifically, we're really trying to focus on shaping security within cloud computing. So our mission is to empower organizations and developers to use any technology safely. And OpenFGA is our attempt to contribute back to this larger open source community to try and achieve that mission. Now, what we do at Okta is we actually work, most, most of my day is working on OpenFGA, you know, improving the security posture of OpenFGA, adding features, you know, addressing community feedback. I work in OpenFGA every day, and everything we do in OpenFGA makes its way into our commercial offering, Okta FGA. So if we can elevate our overall security posture, you know, the quality of our software and our software development lifecycle in OpenFGA, it directly benefits everything we're doing commercially within Okta on this project. So there's mutual investment here. 
Now, in my personal experience working on OpenFGA, a few things that I've noticed that have differed from my past experience working on other software projects that I think are good examples for us all to look at. On our team, we make security health metrics a cultural priority. So every Monday, we have a weekly sync meeting, and part of that weekly sync meeting, we look at various uh, security-related health metrics. For example, we look at our container vulnerability scanning reports, our application dependency scanning reports, we look at certain security um, network policies, and we also use a lot of other tools that report common vulnerability problems like SQL injection attacks and similar. We look at those, we roll those metrics up, and we actually triage them and prioritize them very quickly, and we take that very seriously. Now, there's, if, if you're wondering what are some things that you can do to improve your security posture, your culture and practices around secure software, uh, OpenSSF is actually a great place to start, and we've used it as a guideline as well. So OpenSSF has best practices. They give you some great objective guidelines that you can start following to improve your overall security posture in your software lifecycle. And as you're learning these things, I encourage you to share these learnings with your, within your team and more broadly within your org. It turns out that a lot of people don't know a lot about these resources, and there's a lot of items from these resources that isn't common knowledge yet. So elevating that overall shared knowledge, I think, is a benefit to us all as a community. The other thing that I've noticed that I think we've done a good job at in OpenFGA, really important, is to gamify security. I know it sounds kind of corny, but make it fun, make it rewarding, right? Like, we, we've come from an industry where security is oftentimes, unfortunately, an afterthought, right? It's reactionary, and it's a checklist and compliance item. But I think we can do better than that, right? We can actually make it fun and rewarding, and there's great ways to do this. One example that I have, from our experiences with OpenSSF Scorecard. So OpenSSF Scorecard gives you a rating, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, on how good your security posture is in your software practices. And when I log in on Monday morning and we're going through our weekly sync, I can see that we've deteriorated from an A score to a B or C score because of reasons X, Y, Z. And it's fun to then be able to say, okay, well, I'm gonna get that back to an A, I'm gonna address those concerns. And it, you know, there's a sense of accomplishment and a reward to the end of that. Finally, it's really fun to get involved in security assessments, and I would encourage all of you in your organizations to participate in those more often. It's fun to try and poke holes in your architecture and look more holistically at what you're building and you know, try to find problems with it. And to collaborate with other people in the CNCF ecosystem to also try and gain a more collective understanding of you know, where are potential threats with your architecture or the software that you're building. And then finally, one thing we've done, we participated in this last year, it was a security slam. It was put on by the TAG security group. And uh, we actually won multiple awards in the security slam. And that was really fun, right? Because it's a nice little pack on the back of all the hard work that you've done to try and increase and elevate your overall security posture, right? Like the hard work that you put into improving the security of your software shouldn't go unnoticed. So find opportunities to get rewarded for the hard work that you've done. So again, if we can just kind of practice more of these things, I think overall in our organizations, we'll find that security becomes more, more of a cultural uh, phenomenon rather than you know, a requirement, an afterthought, an afterthought and reactionary. Now, before I hand it back over to Kaylin, I just wanted to give a special shout out and some thanks to people in the community. Uh, we have had multiple contributors in our community that have contribu contributed back, um, you know, uh, commits related to uh, security things. For example, we had a member from the community that contributed uh, some chain guard image updates and educated us on chain guard and the mission behind chain guard and what they're doing. I thought that was really cool. Um, and we've also had some members from CNCF. Eddie Knight, he has assisted our team with adding secure software supply chain, including software bill and material generation, artifact signing, and artifact verification. And then Justin, Robert, and Krishna have been continuing to help our team with security assessments, poking holes, you know, pointing out potential vulnerability concerns and how industry is addressing these things and helping us identify and plan work to address security concerns. So these are members from CMCF. They've been helping us. They're an extension of our team. They don't work for us. They don't work, they work with us. They don't work for us, but they're an extension of our team and they've been super valuable. So it's a great demonstration of how this community can really come together and share more collective knowledge. 
Okay, so finally, um, what can you do? And acknowledging that if you're in this room, you're pro probably already someone who's doing a whole lot more uh, than average, so thank you. But if you're feeling motivated to get your company involved in CNCF, or if you wanna know more about how you can get time to contribute to open source, um, feel free to reach out to myself, to anyone in the CNCF, join the CNCF Slack, hop in the tag security channel, um, and reach out. We're all really enthusiastic about getting um, getting new people involved uh, and what was told to me when I first joined and I like to tell everyone is like the most important thing you can do when getting involved in open source is just show up the more you show up the more we see your face the more you come to the meetings and we just see that that you're someone who's who's up for sticking around the more that we're going to be comfortable dedicating the very valuable and finite resource of our time um, to helping you learn the things that you need to do to be valuable um, and as a company you can simply start by allowing open source contributions as as part of your professional development for employees. If you have some kind of set amount of time, really make sure that employees know that if they go out and they give to the community, that, that counts towards um, their professional development. And finally, um, just thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for um, supporting the community. If you'd like to chat more about OpenFGA or um, Okta in general, we do have a booth. I have here that I'm supposed to say what the booth number is, but I didn't do that. So look it up on the schedule or just look at me. I'll be loud and there. Um, and we have another team member who will be giving a talk tomorrow at 1.55 to 2.30 p.m. So I hope that this short story shows you that there really is um, value in giving back to open source, even if you're a pointy-haired boss and you need to justify it. Um, it's worth it. And if you need help selling it, I will help you. Come find me. Um, thank you so much.